guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Doll. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mask making sessions. We are up to week number 193, would you believe? Oh my goodness, it is just flying by. So for those people who don't watch my channel, what we are doing, we are doing reruns. So we are rerunning week number 93, so week number 193. Um, and what we are making this week, we are making concertina fold-outs for your junk journals. Now, I have got a slight variation on the original video for these. Um, the original video was very, very scatty and um, it was a kind of new concept and I was still kind of playing around and adjusting them. So today's video is going to be a slight variation to the original and hopefully you will like it and you will think it's an improvement to the original. Um, so what will you need if you are wanting to make along with me you are going to need some paper now my paper is 230 gsm now mine are digitals that's because that's predominantly what i have most of these days you could use scrap bit paper you could use um you know i don't know book page anything that you like really um, the only thing that I would suggest is that it's plain on the reverse. Now, the reason why you want it plain on the reverse is because the concertina fold out is going to fold out for you to journal on the back. So obviously, if you're using book page, if you will fold it out and it's got text on, that's not going to be very handy. So if you are using book page, I would suggest book page that's, you know, text on one side, plain on the reverse, that kind of thing. Um, However, like I say, I'm going to be using digitals. Again, with scrap bit paper, if you're wanting to journal on the reverse, you're going to want something that's, you know, preferably got a plainer reverse. Now, my paper, I have coffee dyed. I've obviously splodged um, some sort of ink or something on there. Um, but yeah, I've coffee dyed the reverse because I don't like it being stark white. So again, if you're using something like digitals or scrap bit paper that's plain white on the back, you may want to just coffee dye or, you know, ink it up or something like that if you don't like the white backgrounds. So you're going to need paper. You're going to need some scissors. Um, you're going to need either a bone folder or you could, of course, use your scissor handles. Um, you're going to need some glue. And you're going to need either some um you know brads or eyelets or something like that with i like to keep a few circles that are ready punched out these are one inch circles these are to make the closure and you will see kind of what i'm talking about once we get making these if you have alternatives to making like the you know the policy closure envelopes if you have alternatives that you like to use instead then of course use your alternatives. I'm going to be just using these. And my favorite way to kind of secure these is normally with a brad. So of course a brad. And then if you, you know, if you need to punch holes or pierce holes, you're going to maybe need a paper piercer or a crocodile or something like that. Obviously the brads or alternatively eyelets, you know, something like that. And then, oops, forgot to bring it along. So you're going to need some sort of string closure. Now, I've got here some baker's twine. Again, you could use baker's twine. You could use string. You could use, you know, anything that you like. Um, alternatively, you could possibly use paper clips, things like that. And again, you're going to see once we get making these, you know, why you could vary the closure as to, you know, how you'd like to vary it. Um, the only other sort of thing that I would say that you may or may not like to bring along is I am going to be cutting my paper lengthways so if you don't feel that comfortable cutting your paper with your scissors then you may like to use a paper trimmer i personally don't you know don't use paper trimmers because i find them very cumbersome but of course you know this is your project so you use you know what you like to use best um aside from that i'm going to be using some anita's tacky glue this is a pva based glue again use the glue of your choice um and i think that's it for making the actual basic items um, of course, if you want to add different variations, you know, you can pull in a paper rounder, things like that. And then if you're going to want to decorate, you may want to use your blendy tools. You may want to use your distress ink. You may want to add lace. You may want to add, you know, other decorative items. I like to just decorate one as part of the mass making workshops. 
but if you want to decorate them all obviously you know that's kind of your choice I like to leave them then blank so that I can decorate them as I go so how do we make these let's have a look so I'm going to take my first sheet now this is some from my junk journal basics kit 2 and I'm going to start by folding it in half so I'm folding it in half here lengthways okay now I do this because I find this the best way to get a straight line without using a paper trimmer so I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to ooh, pop my glasses on so as I can see a bit better what I'm doing and we just cut straight down the edge here I mean I just literally go over slightly obviously you could just fold this you could tear it you know then you are going to get that slightly sort of furry edge on the torn edge but you know anything that you like is fine so you've got your two pieces now the variation here is going to come because we are going to use one of these pieces as our base piece in the previous video where I did these we just glued them straight onto a journal page but this time we're going to use one as a base piece so I'm going to actually use this because I've got that splodge on there so let's put that to one side okay so what we're going to do we're going to just concertina fold this over now it doesn't probably matter which way we go but I'm just going to take this in and fold it one like that okay and then another concertina fold here, like, oops, like that. Okay, now I did stick with just the two folds when I made these previously. You could potentially do another one. Um, I don't know whether it would be getting too bulky. Should we try it? Let's just try it like that. So we've got three folds now, okay? So I'm then going to take my bone folder and squish them all down simultaneously like that okay obviously if you don't have a bone folder just use your you know your scissor handles so what you've got here <clears throat> is basically obviously a concertina fold so you've got your lovely decorative pages and then on the reverse you've got obviously plain that would be your journaling space now I'm just going to point this out my concertina folds as you can see they're not overly overlapping one another doesn't really matter if you do overlap but I would suggest don't overlap too much because that's going to bulk your piece out and you know make it quite chunky so as you can see mine are not really overlapping at all okay now this is where I stuck this directly onto the journal page when I made these previously but I think as an adaptation for these what you're better off doing actually is using another sheet and gluing this onto the sheet okay so then what you've got is your complete pocket all attached onto this one sheet so like that now when you glue this down it's up to you really how you glue this down but I'm sort of suggesting glue it down here on this edge and you're going to glue this down on three sides so you're going to form a pocket okay so I'm just going to decide which which section I want to use okay so I'm going to use this section so I've got some of the blue showing now I'm going to glue this on with a section hanging over here so that my circle closure you know my policy closure is going to go onto oh what a noisy car that is if you could hear that I do apologize um so my policy closure is going to go on there like that now at this point you could either have another policy closure here so as it's going to wrap from end to end or to save you kind of the faffing around what you could do is just literally glue your string in under there if that makes sense okay so I think that's a kind of quite good time saver so what we're going to do is we're going to glue this down first now let's take my oops tacky glue 
So we're going to glue this down here. Ooh. Ooh, come on. This is the first time I've used it today. I'm actually filming this in the afternoon and I never film mass, oops, mass making videos in the afternoon. So, but I've been really busy this morning doing some other things that I had to do. So um, yeah, it's late in the day for me, which to be honest is always a bit of a mistake. So uh, I'll apologize now because we may get very flaky, but hopefully not quite as scatty as the first version of this video, which was pretty appalling it's got to be said so I'm going to take a dry wipe and just kind of press that in now what you can do is cover your string up if you're just sticking your string straight straight down directly onto the page you can then just cover it with some paper which is kind of like good practice I think because it's an extra security measure to make sure that your string closure you know, your string doesn't come unstuck. So, hold on, talking of coming unstuck. I'm coming unstuck with my glue not working. Okay, let's make that hole a bit bigger. <clears throat> right. Okay, dokie. I've not had glue problems for a long time, but oh my goodness, it's now oozing out. I literally can't wait to come out now. Right, I'm just going to make this slightly smaller. Okay, right. So, just glue this down here like this. Okie dokie. Okay. So I'm just going to then take, now I'm still using up some of my, my chipboard, oops, my chipboard letters here as a sort of glue spreader like that. Okay. Now I hope I haven't glued this too high up now. Oh gosh, I have glued it pretty high up, haven't I? Right, I might have to trim this down slightly. Well, it, it might be okay, actually. Yeah, I am pretty, pretty close to the wire, but not, not too bad. So I'm just going to take this down slightly, just because I've, you know, I've ended up gluing the, uh, cutting this, you know, a little bit kind of, or gl gluing it, sorry, a little bit kind of too high. Right, so I'm going to glue my pocket down here, so just on these three edges. Okay, now there are quite a few variations that we can do with these, so we will run through a few variations, but we'll just kind of do them one at a time. Oops, one at a time, so that you, you know, yeah, so that I don't confuse it by talking about all the variations at the same time because that's a bit what happened last time. Okay, so that's glued onto what's going to form the base of the pocket. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim that pocket down across there. So as close as I can to the baker's twine, like that. Okay. Okie dokie. So my pocket is there. And then all you're going to do here is we're going to glue on our policy closure. So for my policy closure, I've just got two circles. This is actually, I don't need to have two circles. I can just get away with one because we're going straight onto this pocket. So yeah, scrap that two circle method. If you're going straight onto a pocket that's going to be glued down, you can really get away with just one. So I'm just going to go straight through there with my piercing tool, get my brad, which these are the brads that the lovely Michelle had gifted to me. So thank you so much, Michelle, if you are watching, I just want to say thank you. I love these and really appreciate you gifting them to me and sending them to me. That's so, so, so kind of you, thank you. So there we go, that's our closure. Now, obviously you might want to kind of keep this press down for a, you know, for a couple of minutes just because, you know, it's got some bulk there to get through. But that's it. And then what you've got is basically your wrap around closure here. <clears throat> okay, oops, so I'm just going to cut my thread here now. 
and that's your pocket so when you glue this down you'd glue it on perhaps three sides here and it would then be a side loading pocket there like that and then when you unwrap this oops unwrap this you've then got your concertina here so all of this is then journaling space and then in here sorry about this it's not obviously quite stuck yet but in here you've then got a pocket so you've got like a hidden pocket in there and then you've got concertina here which looks quite pretty doesn't it and then you've got your oops policy closure at the top there so I mean I think they're quite nifty and to be honest like I say this is a bit of a variation from the original but I think it's a really good addition so that's that one so I'm just going to put that to one side now I'm going to run you through one more because I realize they're a little bit not complicated but they're a little bit more convoluted than perhaps some of the things that we do make so let's take this now this is some of my shabby chic papers from the collections papers now again I'm going to cut this straight down lengthways so let's fold this in half like that okay yeah, originally I had just glued these directly to the page and I'm not saying that that didn't work because, you know, it did work. Um, but actually, I think this is a better way of doing them, um, you know, and I know we've talked about this before, but I think that's one of the advantages of doing the reruns of the mass making is actually over time you can, you know, not saying always, but, you know, you can develop different ways of doing things or additions or, you know, maybe faster ways or something that maybe you know works better for you you know you than it did perhaps first time around or you know maybe first time around it would have worked better but it's nice to kind of have the um you know the variation isn't it so we're going to take this one and we're going to do the same again but this time I talked about doing kind of variations so what we're going to do this time is we're going to form a little pocket on the front as well so, need to concentrate on how I'm doing this because um, I could quite easily, <laughs> quite easily muck this up. So, I think, oh, no, what, what am I thinking? Ah, right, so I want to go here and then, yeah, right, okay. So, I'm going to fold the bottom up. So, I've got my whole length piece here. I'm going to move that out of the way so we don't get confused. This whole piece, now, I'm just going to fold this up to form... A little pocket here at the bottom okay and then what you're going to do is you're going to make your concertina pieces like that okay so we've got one oops, and then we've got two now remember you know it's your item so you can stick with however many fold ups that you like oops but obviously we've now got that extra pocket at the bottom. So depending on the size paper that you've used, you know, particularly if you've used um, book page or something like that. Oops, not folded this very straight. Um, if you've used book page or something, you know, you might not really have a tall enough piece of paper to be able to kind of have too many folds. So, you know, use your kind of paper to guide you. Oh, I've obviously not not folded this very straight have I so I'm mm, struggling to uh, get this straight now okay and then we can then just fold this one over here at the top mm, what a terrible job I have made of fo <laughs> folding this okay so that's my next one now I'm just going to squish that down with the bone folder here Okay, now once you've squished it down, it really does kind of, you know, ease it up and make it sort of so much easier to handle. Obviously, you can see mine's very wonky now, so I'm just going to trim it up here down the side. And yeah, just trim it up slightly here on this side as well. Okay, let's go in here like that. Okay. like that all right and then we're going to just take our base piece that we're going to put it put this on 
and we're going to be putting it down like this okay and then it's going to all be tucking in like that so this one is folding if you can see in the complete reverse to how this one folded so can you see these folds are going kind of downwards these ones are going upwards which I'll show you in a second why I think this is a sort of um, little bonus kind of piece. So I'm going to move this down here slightly. And then what we're going to do, we're going to have our, um, you know, what do you call it? The wraparound policy closure, I think on here. I'm just going to check whether that's going to look too much having to... No, I, I think that's going to look okay. Just check whether I want the coffee dyed ones or whether I want to mix it up and have these brown ones. I could do with punching some more circles. Unfortunately, my one inch circle punch has broken and um, yeah, I could do with buying a new one. And would you believe, they just don't appear to be anywhere anymore. I think I had problems sourcing a one inch circle punch before because I know that the lovely Heather actually bought me a circle punch in the end but yeah I'm sure I had problems finding them before so it's very annoying right okay so what we're going to do we're going to have it here so I'm just going to punch this through here like that okay take my brad Oops. like that and then we just yeah squish that down there let me just Press that down. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is glue this down. Now, this one, obviously, we've got a slightly different scenario because this is kind of folding into here. So, of course, this base piece can't really be a pocket, if you see what I mean, because, you know, you're going to come unstuck here, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do, in fact, is I'm going to start by gluing, oops, gluing this down here on the sides. Okay, so one, two, like that. Okie dokie. Again, just taking my dried wet wipe to smoosh that glue down. Let me just have a sip of my tea. Oh, it's a bit cold now. <laughs> it's been sat there for a while. Okay, so squish those down like that. Okay, so what we're going to do with this one is we're actually going to glue it down more like a solid piece down here. Okay, so I just want to keep my piece there so I, you know, know roughly where I'm kind of going to. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to glue it down. Now, what I'm going to do is just glue pretty much this whole section so like that okay so that whole bit I've got my circle there so I know roughly where that's going uh, which side do I want to go because I'm going to have to trim this down a bit so I just want to yeah put it let's put it on this side right okay so smoosh that down like that. Spread the glue out. Okay. Like that. Okie dokie. And then I'm going to then put my other circle, hopefully roughly, roughly in line. Like that. And yep, just take my bread. Oh, come on. Right, there we go. And then I just need to trim my base up here. So, of course, trim it up at the bottom. Now, I'm sure you could do more variations with these. You could probably even have them as like a folding piece. You know, with this here, you could fold it, maybe have it as a fold down. I don't know. I haven't kind of played around, you know, to that extent. But I'm sure there are other things that you could do. But I'm going to just kind of stick with this. So again, just going to take this string and we'll just tie it round, oops, tie it round the brad. Oops, come on. 
like that and then we're just going to tie it round the other way just to that's it oops that's it like that okay now all I'm going to do now I'm just going to wrap this around so as I've just got it kind of held tight for my trimming because it's obviously easier if it's you know pulled tight in fact what we could do is wrap this around at the bottom there we go like that and just trim that down okay now that looks a bit curly now but don't forget when this is glued down onto a page it's going to be pulled flat so although it's curling at the moment when it's glued down it will be you know flattening it out so I'm just going to trim this down here on the edge like that so it's you know in line there we go and this is where I say, you know, if you wanted to kind of add a bit of variation, you could obviously round your corners or whatever, you know, however you wanted to do it. But what is quite nice about doing it this way round is you've now got these little bits, which you could use as pockets. So, of course, you've got this here. And I thought that was going to fit, but no, I haven't really got anything that's going to fit. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to take this and show you with this. You've got this, which is a proper pocket because we've obviously glued it down at the edges. And then you've got these, which you could use as additional pockets. And then, of course, you unwrap your string like that. And then you've got your journaling space here that you can then journal on. So, I mean, they're just really quite nice, aren't they? There's something a bit different, I think. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you remember the first video or, you know, if you checked it out, the first video now, hopefully you will think that the adding the backing card is a really good addition to these because it just makes them so much more, um, you know, instantly recognisable and usable as to how you're going to use them. So I think what we'll do is we will just now get on with mass making some. Now I'm just going to quickly finish my tea. Okay, sorry about that. Right, okay. So yes, my tea's finished. So let's just get on with having a bit of a mass make of these. Um, so we'll just relax now, have a nice time and yeah, do some mass making. So I'm going to be doing it kind of assembly line style. So if you're not familiar with this um, format of videos, we're just going to do all the same processes or the same stages at the same process or same process is at the same stage um whichever way <laughs> whichever way to phrase that so i'm going to do like all of my folding then all of my cutting then all of my other folding all of my sticking you know all like that really um and we can just relax now and have a lovely time and have a catch up so yep and i will try and remember to tell you what papers i'm using so this one here is from my melrose kit um so that's what that one is this one is from the victorian springtime so, yes, I hope that everybody's week has started out well. I apologise so much for there being no mass making last week. Um, I really just came out with the worst cold going on the Monday. Now, I have to say, when I say the worst cold going, it was the worst cold going for Monday. And then, actually, it kind of came to nothing because it was just lingering slightly for the rest of the week, but not really too, too bad. On the Monday, it was terrible. This is my French collection papers. Um, on the Monday it was absolutely terrible and you know my nose was streaming and yeah I was actually I'm just going to check that I don't want to mix mix these papers in because I just thought oh perhaps I could have like different papers with different backgrounds might be quite fun might not they um anyway so yeah came out with this terrible terrible cold and um I just had the worst streaming nose and things like that. So, you know, I obviously couldn't really film because obviously I would have been having to stop the video every two seconds to blow my nose. So I just thought I would spare you all that because, you know, that obviously would not be very pleasant. And um, yeah, I thought that I would just spare you all and uh, <laughs> not, not film a video. So I do apologise. But yes, hopefully it's all gone now and, um, you know, I've got a bit of a croaky throat, but yeah, I don't think that's actually the cold. Now I'm just wondering, because I'm kind of thinking, oh, I do quite fancy the idea of, um, you know, mixing these papers up now. So I'm wondering whether I've got 
any papers that sort of lend themselves to be mixed with one another more than others maybe not to be honest right so yes these are the french collection papers so let's fold those oh and the green this one was from the lace collection the lace collection blues and greens so um yeah and yeah i did put some um lace collection pale versions of the lace collection papers together um and i released them or launched them last week i think in my shop um and that was following my giveaway video where i had obviously asked you guys for what collections papers you would like to see and the pale versions of the lace or the subdued you know muted versions of the lace papers that was quite a popular theme so yeah hopefully um you know anybody who may have bought those you know you hopefully have liked them and they've lived up to what you had hoped they would be like so just going to now cut all my papers now so yeah i hope that everybody's week has started out well um it is the most horrible weather here i have to say i mean i'm filming this it's the 31st of july so you know proper like proper you know midsummer here um well you would not think it was midsummer it is absolutely horrible it's been raining continually now the whole of yesterday the whole of today it's really grey, really drab, really quite cold. I mean, I went out earlier and I had on a long sleeve dress that I've got on now, long sleeve cardigan that I've got on now, and my denim jacket. So pretty cold. And even my tights, would you believe? So it's definitely not feeling like midsummer at all. I mean, it's very very disappointing so yeah i don't know what's going on with the weather and to be honest it looks kind of set to continue i mean oh i hope that my app is wrong um i can't remember whether it's the met office that i use or something else but anyway hoping that's wrong because it's not great weather at all and like i say i mean it's pretty much the middle of our summer so talk about disappointing so the children broke up from school um, last, yeah, the week before last. Um, so my daughter was obviously home last week. So, yeah, she's been um, home for a week now. Well, just over a week. And, um, yeah, what have we been up to? So I took her to see the Barbie movie. I'm sure that I did talk about the Barbie movie in the last mass making that I did. Um, I said I thought it was that lady from Legally Blonde and now her name's escaped me again which I think it did in that first video oh I don't know what's wrong with me and names anyway it wasn't her it was oh gosh why am I so awful with names oh it's on the tip of my tongue who was playing Barbie um oh gosh what's her name Helen Mirren she's like a narrator and she even says her name oh gosh what was her name what was her name <gasps> Can't remember right okay so i'm going to do that one with the pocket again because i actually really liked the one with the pocket so i'm going to just yeah fold this up here um like this to get started so oh gosh what is that girl's name oh is she australian um oh, this is so annoying don't you hate it when you can't remember somebody's name I mean, that's just a common thing for me, to be honest. I don't remember anybody's names. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh, that's going to just really irritate me, to be honest. Might even have to stop the video and Google it. Anyway. Anyway, it's her. Um, I can't even think what else she's been in. But she's been in loads of things. I mean, loads. And she is a brilliant actress because she really plays some very different characters. So, yeah. Um... Honestly, and loads of you will, I'm sure, reply and say, you know, leave comments saying who it is. Um, mm. Oh, gosh, what is her name? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, yes. So, went to see that. And the chap in it is Ryan Gosling. So, not the gorgeous, gorgeous Ryan Reynolds. I mean, Ryan Gosling, yeah, he's quite nice. But he's not quite, quite as good as Ryan Reynolds, I think. Um, anyway, he was the he was the person playing Ken, like the main Ken. Obviously, there were several Kens, and she was the main Barbie. Again, obviously, there were several Barbies, but yeah, she was the main one. Um, it was kind of good. I don't know. 
I had a bit mixed feelings. It went on probably, for me, I think it just went on a bit long. Perhaps like half an hour too long, really. Um, I think the concept was really good. It was uh, multi-faceted, you know, it had lots of kind of um, different dimensions to it, you know, different aspects, which was, it was highlighting, you know, which you were like, oh, wow, yeah, they, oh, they've got a point. Yeah, that's definitely true. You know, so it was one of them. And I'm just wondering whether I want to mix these with the florals or whether I want to just go for this. Oh, let's just right let's just see so yeah if I just have this like that. um yeah it was quite multi you know multifaceted so uh yeah kind of showed what a you know male dominated world we still live in I think and um yeah kind of yeah like I say I mean lots of bits that you thought oh that's so true you know but you don't necessarily kind of think about because they're just you know that's just how the world seems to be so that was quite good I mean like she goes into um like the boardroom of Mattel you know the makers of the Barbie doll and um it's just a sea of men and of course she's used to living in Barbie land where it's obviously run by the Barbies you know and everything's pink and everything's girly and everything's perfect you know and all of those kinds of things and um you know she kind of goes in and it's all these men and she's like well you know where's where's the woman you know where's where's the boss where's the woman and they were like uh you know because of course there, there aren't any women really working there um you know and I just thought yeah that that is a bit how it is isn't it um so yeah it was it was okay it was, like I say, for me, it just went on a little bit too long and um, probably would have been, yeah, just better if it was a bit shorter, you know, yeah. But, I mean, overall, it was okay. Now, I have to be honest, and, oh, gosh, you know, <laughs> probably not doing women any good here, but, I mean, I went with, obviously, my daughter and my mum came as well and... Oh, my nephew will hate me saying this, but yeah, he came as well. Not because he wanted to see the Barbie movie, but just because he wanted to come and be, you know, with my daughter kind of thing and do what she was doing. So, yeah, he was kind of obviously horrified that he was going to watch Barbie. But, you know, he wanted to obviously hang out and do what she was doing. So, um, yeah, he came. And um, I whispered to my mum at one point, I said, well, if this is supposed to be like, you know, doing us good kind of like, you know, from a feminism point of view, kind of saying, oh, you know, we don't need everything being kind of pink and girly. Look at us, you know, the independent woman. The irony, I said, because, you know, straight away, my daughter whispered to me, oh, I want to live in Barbie land, you know, <laughs> because obviously it looked so pretty and pink and everything else. So, yeah, I thought, oh, you know, they, they failed miserably with her because she just thought it looked amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. But, hey, who, who wouldn't want to live in a lovely pink world? So, um, yes. Anyway, so that was that. What else did we do? We also went to the circus because um, literally, like, over the road to our house, there was a circus. So, I mean, when I say over the road, I mean, I'm talking like, you know, probably like six minutes walk or something like that. It was along our road, but further down. And um, yeah, so we went to the circus and that was fantastic. So again, I went with my sister, with Natalie and obviously her son and um, yeah, my daughter. Oh my goodness. I mean, I love going to the circus. They are so incredibly talented. Now, I'm pretty sure that I have been to the circus, you know, and talked about this before. I mean, obviously, I've been to the circus before, but I'm saying I, I think I've even talked about it before on my channel because, um, oh, I mean, they are so talented, aren't they? Those circus performers, you know, they really are so incredibly talented. They are, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, incredible. So, I mean, when we were children, it was clowns and, you know, I mean, they were probably animals. I can't really remember, to be honest. But, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that I 
you know, I must have overlapped when there was animals, you know, performing, not, well, yeah, I guess performing at the circus. Um, oh, I nearly went to uh, finish that one off. I mustn't do that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, you know, I overlapped when there were kind of like, um, you know, I don't know whether there were elephants and things like that. This is my uh, background papers, The Move. So I'm going to, I think, do some in these, actually, because I really love these papers. Um, yeah, I think, you know, there were kind of like animals and things like that when, um, you know, when I went to the circus as a child. But of course, there's no animals now. And actually, there's no clowns, you know, which, you know, is probably good because... I think, weirdly, clowns actually freak a lot of people out and, you know, a lot of children especially. I think find clowns a bit scary. Um, so, yeah, there's no clowns now. So that's, that's you know, really good, I think. And, of course, really good that there's no animals because, you know, that must have been awful, mustn't it? You know, the animals kind of being caged and, you know, travelled around in their little, you know, containers and things like that. So, yeah, really good, you know, good... Um, progress has been made there hasn't it you know that we're not any longer kind of doing that type of thing with the with the traveling circuses with the animals but they are now um you know like I would say more like sort of acrobatic shows really so you know the circus I think just gets like a bad reputation doesn't it of being oh the circus you know I mean they're nothing like circuses from when we were children they you know really are incredible incredible performers and um I mean their routines must just be well such a lot of dedication you know to actually get to the level that they get to but <laughs> my sister and I were laughing and kind of saying you know I get that obviously now you know at the standards that they are when they're you know performing on the in the circus you know they obviously they practiced a lot of times so you know I mean, you still are very nervous for them when they're kind of like doing all these really dangerous things, you know, and sometimes without any kind of safety mat, uh, mat underneath them or anything, you know. And you're like, oh my goodness, I hope they don't suddenly fall down or anything like that. But you get that, you know, they've obviously practiced this routine a lot of times and, you know, hopefully very rarely do accidents happen. But that being said, you know, my sister and I, and I do always think this, you know, we were saying... How do you get to that point? You know, kind of, at what point do you sort of, let's say, like, the people who do that fire eating? I mean, I get that they practice all the time. They've become really good at it. But imagine that very first time that you ever do that. I mean, wow. How on earth do they get to that stage where they're like, oh, I'm I'm just going to try kind of sticking this fire in my mouth. I mean, where on earth does that come from? You know, I just find that really, really, really odd. And it's like, you know, I, I get that maybe they're drawn to the circus and they kind of want to do these things. But, oh my goodness, I mean, how does that pan out on the first time that they ever do that type of thing? I mean, you know, touch weird, I never really hear stories of people having like, awful accidents as being you know I, I don't know practicing to try and make it in the circus world but you know let's face it I mean that's pretty brave isn't it you know if you're kind of like the fire eater or like the circus that we went to they had um they had like a sort of big ball thing like a metal kind of cage type thing and they had these motorbikes and they went up a ramp and like flew over and then they went into this metal ball and they were all you know in the end three motorbikes kind of like cycling around all all around you know in this ball all together all in one go now this ball was not very big i have to say i mean i don't know how big you'd call it but definitely did not look even big enough for one motorbike to be like here and about in there let alone three so, you know, again, how on earth would you get to the point where you're like, oh, I know, let's let's put ourselves in this big round cage and just like hair around in there for a little bit, you know? I mean, wow, how on earth do they do that? And they were like going upside down in there and wow, just, you know, how are they not bumping into one another, crashing, dropping off of their motorbikes, you know, all of those things. So, yeah, hats off to 
any circus worker at all, you know, for their bravery, for their bravery, for their, um, you know, dedication in practicing, for their, you know, their sort of craft and their skill. I mean, yeah, just incredible, to be honest. Absolutely incredible. So, um, yeah, that was really, really good. And like I say, I mean... I'm pretty sure that I've even, you know, chatted about going to the circus before, like, you know, because I think we've been before, like, you know, when I've had my channel sort of thing. And oh, my goodness, it really is just so good. Now, I haven't got overly many circles, so I'm just going to kind of pick one or two to do here because I don't want to run out of circles and not have done one that maybe I really, really want to do, if you see what I mean. So I'm just going to decide which ones I really would like to do. So, yeah, maybe this one. Mm. Or maybe here. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe like this. Okay. Um, yeah, they just are amazing. So, that was really, really, really good fun. So, oops. Forgot to put it through here. Yeah. Let me know. I mean, maybe any of you out there, maybe you, you know, have done some of those circus skill things because there are lots of courses, actually. You know, I think it's becoming ever more popular, actually, um, the circus skills courses and things, because I've heard people say, oh, I'm doing a circus, you know, skills course. I mean, I'm guessing that a circus skills course to the, you know, the beginner would consist more of juggling, not of fire eating or anything like that but hey who am I to say I might be completely wrong but yeah let me know below you know have you or do you know of anyone who's perhaps like done any of these circus kind of things I mean they are absolutely like I say fascinating and incredible like to watch and wow just so 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 amazingly talented so yeah so that was last week and um yeah that was kind of it really I don't think we've got anything planned this week. So, yeah, super, super boring. Um, and then at the weekend, Natalie and I, we worked super hard and we did like a big restock in the shop. So um, that was pretty exciting and, you know, pretty cool. So, yeah, and, you know, that worked out well because she just came around to work, you know, at my house for the day at, at the weekend on Saturday and... Um, Obviously, you know, that was great because then the children, obviously, they just were able to play, which was brilliant. So it all worked out very, very well. Okay, so let's do that part. Okay, okay. we'll do this one. So, yeah, that was kind of that. Uh, what else? What else? Well, I don't know. It's my son's birthday this week, so he is 17, 17 on Friday. I just oh, can't believe where the time has gone. So this is my middle son. Um, my oldest son, he's 20. But yeah, my middle son, he's going to be 17 on Friday. So 17 is the age over here in the UK that you can learn to drive. So, of course, he cannot wait to learn to drive absolutely cannot wait to learn to drive so he's got a car and um yeah he can't wait he goes and sits in his car all the time and literally cannot wait to be driving it so um yeah very exciting so on you know on friday i said well what would you like to do for your birthday and he said that he would like to um he's got a driving lesson booked but it's not until the afternoon. So, but he wants to go out driving. So we're going to drive um, somewhere. It's about, probably about 20 miles away, I think, um, to go for breakfast. He knows of somewhere that apparently is really nice for breakfast. I haven't been there before, but he has. Um, so yeah, he wants to go there for breakfast and then oh, go driving somewhere else. Um, and then he wants to obviously come back, have his driving lesson. I can't remember whether he said that was one or two hours. Um, but yeah, his driving lesson and then go out for dinner. So, and he's going to bring his, you know, his friend's going to come with us as well. So yeah, that's going to be really, really nice. So looking forward to Friday. So, oh, I just can't believe it. I mean, honestly, as a mum, I just think, well, where does the time go? 
you know, one minute your children are, you know, teeny weeny and um, the next minute they're literally <laughs> driving. I mean, oh my goodness, that's just flabbergasting, isn't it? So, yeah. So that's what we're going to be doing on Friday. So again, I'm just hoping that the weather cheers up because, I mean, how miserable to be then driving about, you know, as your first kind of like driving, really, in the rain. I mean, oh, not, not great at all. So, yeah, I'm going to have to obviously be sitting with him in the car when we go out driving, you know, before his lesson. So, yeah, I mean, oh... That's kind of nerve-wracking in itself, let's be honest. Although, that being said, I mean, I can remember taking my older son out, you know, learning to drive. And actually, I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought, to be honest. Um, yeah, it wasn't as bad as I had been expecting. So, yeah, hopefully it will be fine. Now, I'm just checking the time. We're kind of getting on to like 23 minutes. And I'd obviously done about 20 minutes, I think, before. So, I'm thinking... We will probably not have time to do the other two that I've done. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut these down to size, put the circles on, and then we will decorate one or two of these ones up. So, yeah, let's do this one. I've not made a very good job of cutting this. Okay, right. So, yeah, let's glue this one down. It turns out I've done all of these with that bottom pocket and um, yeah, it wasn't intentional really, but I was just chatting and totally forgot to actually do any other variations, um, you know, but yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I think you could kind of do some other variations with these, like say you could possibly have these folding out or anything, you know. You could also do them more with a landscape paper rather than portrait. And then you could have them like folding out like this on a page. So, you know, oops, like that, sorry, on a page rather than portrait. And I think that would be quite nice too. So, you know, I definitely think, you know, these are quite a flexible, flexible one. So just going to put that into there and then, yep, put the circle up the top. I'm still watching Hannibal, would you believe? <laughs> I don't seem to be getting very far with it, to be honest. Um, I must be quite near the end now. I mean, I'm on season three, which it's only got three seasons. I couldn't tell you what episode I'm on, I'm afraid. But yeah, I'm still going with it. But yeah, still enjoying it. And weirdly, it seems to now be getting more like the film. So yeah, but very, very, very good. So, you know, definitely, definitely one to watch. You know, if you haven't watched it, I would really recommend it. So, you know, if you like that sort of thing. I mean, I did say before, it's quite gory. So, you know, not the best if you are not keen on, you know, murdery type, gory type things. It's pretty gory. So, yeah, not really probably the best if you're not that way inclined. But if you like gory things, then it's pretty good. I don't think you would have to see the original films, really, to appreciate it. I think you'd, you know, I think it would make sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you would have to. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good anyway, really, really enjoying it. And also that lady um, from X-Files, she is in it. Is her name Gillian Anderson? Margot Robbie, by the way. <laughs> That's the name of the person who plays the Barbie. Yes. She's the beautiful lady who plays the Barbie. Um, yeah, um, Gillian Anderson, she is also in Hannibal. I'm not going to put the circles at the top because I just want to kind of stick them down and then we're just going to decorate one. So, um, yeah, just before we kind of uh, run out of time to do that. Yeah, Gillian Anderson, she is in it. Now, I have to say, hasn't she got the most brilliant accent? Um she just is yeah very watchable this very kind of like um like a bit of a dramatic kind of voice isn't it it's yeah very like an elegant voice is the only way I can describe it so yeah and she's brilliant in it and I have to say she looks so beautiful in it very 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 pretty so yeah I'm quite enjoying that still and would still recommend it so 
yep if you haven't watched it i would recommend that right okay so which one should we bring in to decorate shall i just do this one because this is actually now you know um uh you know glued and everything else so yep let's do this one now like i say i'm going to i think um what am i going to do yeah maybe just add some some lace to this now where would we have the lace and i'm thinking only really one one of these kind of pocket type areas oops needs lace like that and then what i'm thinking is probably put the pockets or the things in the pockets really rather than overly decorating this so just having a look around to see what I've got that I can put into some pockets. I've got some of my ephemera type pieces here. So yeah, I'm thinking kind of, you know, slot these in. And that's where the decoration would come more. So yeah, I'm going to just undo this circle. And like I say, this is kind of, not bending up, but just curving slightly. That's just because it's not glued down on a page. And obviously once it was glued, you know, that would stop happening. But I'm just going to glue this down onto here. Okay, like that. Now I will try and do um, one of my uh, junk journal restock videos. Um, you know, to give you a closer look as to the pieces that Natalie and I put in my shop at the weekend. Um, yeah, I will try and do that because obviously, you know, it's probably nice to see things in a bit more detail. Obviously, with my new video in schedule, or, you know, upload in schedule, it's kind of difficult because I don't want to just waste my, my video slot by putting things up that are now just in my shop if that makes sense because that just feels a little bit boring but yeah i mean i might have to this week unless we have like a bonus video i'm not sure hmm, let's have a look so yeah maybe we could just have a little bit of trim or something like that on here I'm actually thinking i normally like three for some reason i don't know why so it's just like three of these big pearls so down there I think there or that side I don't know why I'm always just drawn to put things right side I, know I talk about this a lot but I think it's just because when you're right-handed you just your brain goes oh put it on the right but yeah you know it doesn't have to go on the right obviously okay so that's that one and then like I say we can then Ray, maybe round the corners of this just to give it a different look like that okay oh my goodness how lovely is this looking and then let's see so perhaps we'll have all right i just need to be careful that i've got enough room to be putting these bits in here because otherwise they could get in the way there of the, the closure. So maybe we'll have those two, although actually I'm thinking maybe this one. Yeah, that one, okay. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? Oh, hold on. No, it's too big there. Right, so we'll just have them like that. So, and I, what I'll do, I will just put a little bit of lace, I think, on those just to tie them in with the you know the lace here so for instance here we could just have that little bit of lace and then oh what did I do with that little square there we go so we could have it like that so these are just my ephemera pieces um I think it's set five I think so we just ink those up like that And the lace packs, there are, um, you know, lace packs, they're available in my shop on my Shabby Dabby Doo Doll website as well. So if you wanted lace, there's also the trim packs. This square trim, 
this is new to me um i haven't come across it before so yeah that's not in there yet um i need to kind of maybe try and buy some more because i always like to buy things and just try them out and see whether i think they're nice before i kind of commit to buying more um but yeah i, I think they are nice so i may well buy some more of those and then um that would be in my shop but in the meantime i do have you know that sort of um the other trim packs which contain the little rosebud flowers and the black diamante trim you know that i use often so they are they are in my shop at the moment so yeah if you wanted to kind of check out the lace or check out the trim then they are there and there's some more like fabric clusters lace clusters paper clusters they're all in there as well um some more of the speciality paper packs which is like the sort of printed papers on vellum and um acetate and things there in there I'm trying to think what else oh there's i don't know a journal cover and things like that so yeah there's quite a few nice things in there at the moment now i'm just wondering so for this one what i'm going to do i'm just going to take oops take this lace here oops and then i'm just going to glue it down on here across the top like that and then what I'll do, I just trim that, trim that down. So we just pop that on like that. And then just going to trim that down. So I just cut that down here. And then, oops, trim it down across here. Like that. Oh, how pretty is that? I love it. Okay, so that just goes in like that. And then what we do, just... Oops, wind this round here again. Okay. Now, just wondering whether I want to have anything else on here. Maybe like a butterfly or maybe a bow or anything. Um, just having a quick look around my desk to see if there's anything kind of like really, you know, sticking out. Saying, oh, use me, use me. <laughs> Can't see anything right now. Um, oh, where's some of my bows? Oh, my house and my desk, they're still in a bit disarray, I'm afraid, from where we moved out, um, you know, to rent our house out. So, yeah, we're not kind of back straight yet. And, um, yes, it's pretty messy still, it's got to be said. So, honestly, I just wonder whether I'll ever not be messy. Okay, oops. Oh, there we go. Perhaps we'll just put some black bling on that one. Just because actually that looks quite nice in there as a little bit of a contrast, doesn't it? Instead of just having all the pearly type, pearly type stuff on there. So there we go. Oops. Oh my goodness. Like that. Oops. Have to be careful because the lace is not glued down there. There we go. So yeah, that's that one. And, you know, I didn't really ink around the piece itself but of course could ink around there like that so to just show you how that would look in a journal just going to pull a journal in so yeah let's just pull this one in here okay so you would glue this on I think you know the best way three sides like that so it would give you then a side loading pocket so you could then obviously tuck things in, you know, to the side. And then obviously here, unwrap this. And then you've got three, three pockets. And when I say three, I mean, this is very shallow here. You couldn't fit anything very big in, but you know, you could fit something in. But definitely two pockets there. Oops, you've also got another pocket here, which I totally forgot about. So yeah, you've actually got one, two, three, four if you had something tiny um pockets there and then here open this out obviously it's very pretty because you can see the paper and then just fold this back here on this fold and then you've got all your lovely journaling space here so i'll just move the so quite a bit of journaling space there and of course here what you could do is you know because that first one that we made we had a pocket in here this one is not a pocket because of course we've got the pocket here 
but what you could do is you could put like a label or something on there for more journaling space so I don't have a label to hand but let's say for instance this you could glue there and that would be hidden hidden journaling space there so you know definitely got quite a lot of options with these and yeah I think just really quite nice a really nice way to show off um you know pretty papers because I think you know you get to see a lot of you know a lot of the pretty yummy yummy paper really in these so um yeah I hope that you like them hopefully this was much less chaotic than the first time around and um yeah kind of better <laughs> better kind of way of doing them and hopefully a really good addition of adding them onto the background card or the backing card I think that kind of makes them much more you know instantly usable and um you know kind of more recognizable as to what you would do with them so this was obviously the first one that we made like that so yeah we've done one two three four five and then the completed you know finished one with all the lace and everything as well so yeah I have really hope that you like them have fun if you decide to make any and um yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will see you on Friday for my next video. So thank you so much then. Bye.